feel like maybe we would protest right now, but it feels like you shouldn't even protest because we're not supposed to because of the pandemic. And I don't want to be responsible for spreading more of the coronavirus. I want to do my, I want to do my part to stop that from spreading, but I feel like something has to be done. I'm just spiraling a little bit. I don't even really know what to say anymore. I'm feeling really sad and angry and really, really helpless right now. But the one thing I sort of do know how to do is talk. So that's what I'm doing. I'm making this video to just say how I feel about Ahmaud Arbery and Breonna Taylor and Sean Reed and the continuation of slaughtering of Black people, in this case, young Black people. I'm sure you already all know about Ahmaud Arbery. He was 25, he was jogging in his own neighborhood, and he was chased down and slaughtered like a wild animal. He was shot with a shotgun by two white men who just decided he was a thief just because he's Black. I'm not gonna go into this one too much one just because it hurts and it's sad, but I'm sure you all already know all the information about it already. Travis McMichael and his dad Greg McMichael, the murderers in this case, were finally arrested but only after an outcry from the internet. Like, they were gonna get away with this if the internet didn't explode. Obviously, Ahmad's story is not a new one. Like, I could rattle name after name after name of unarmed black men and women who are murdered all the time. But I think what's really extra scary here is, at least for me, I'm used to hearing about these deaths being committed by the cops, by a police officer, and this was just two random people. I think that's what makes this really extra scary. These were not cops. These were not police officers. And yes, one of these murderers was a detective in the past, which is what at least I'm pretty sure why they were getting away with this for so long. But these two privately armed citizens just decided to kill someone and they did it. They actually chased a person down and shot him with the intent to kill. They weren't afraid of getting in trouble for their actions because they thought they were in the right to do this. They were empowered to believe that if they did this, they weren't gonna get in trouble. Because that is how these armed white people get to live without fear. What is that like? So of course this is a tragedy and these men are finally arrested and to myself I'm like okay at least they're arrested. I mean this is horrible but at least they've finally been arrested. And then right on the heels of that is another death of Brianna Taylor. Brianna Taylor was 26 years old. She was asleep in her own home. Her home where a person is supposed to be able to feel safe and three officers in plain clothes unannounced just busted into her house. Brianna and her boyfriend Kenneth thought they were being robbed. Like, of course they thought they were being robbed. Anyone would have thought that was be they were being robbed if that happened. So Kenneth calls 911 and he grabs his gun that he is licensed to own. And because he thought they were being robbed, he fired it at the police officers because he didn't know they were police officers because they were wearing plain clothes and didn't announce themselves. Now, according to the lawsuit, these officers blindly fired more than 20 rounds and shot Brianna eight times times. Kenneth was arrested and charged with assault and attempted murder of a police officer. This, this didn't have to happen. This really did not have to happen at all. I think Kenneth had every right to fire his weapon and I think after that first shot that he fired, those cops should have left the property to regroup or, you know, realize that they were in the wrong place. They were like 10 miles away from what they were actually looking for. I'm not, you know, obviously in law enforcement, oh my god, I would never, but there is a way to apprehend people without killing them. And I know that because how many times does a white mass shooter with an automatic weapon who has just killed who knows how many people, how many times are they able to be apprehended alive after we know they have committed a huge act of violence? How are we able to apprehend white mass shooters still alive but an unarmed black woman who was in her own home is shot eight times and killed? How can those two things exist at the same time? And the thing is, I know how this can happen and I know why, but it's just easier for me to pretend that I don't understand because the real truth alternative hurts a lot to process. The answer is, at least for me right now, is that America is an ass backwards racist pile of trash. We pretend to be the most advanced country in the world, but black people are being hunted and killed all the time. That hasn't changed. That is a continuing aspect of all of American culture that has, it still hasn't ended. How has it not ended? And I don't really feel safe in this country anymore. My parents are immigrants, I'm first generation. Part of me is like, maybe you should go back to where they came from. 
maybe it's time to leave. I don't know. I'm just, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Like maybe I don't want to live here anymore. I'm angry and I'm sad and I'm trying to ask myself what, what happens now? What do we do? What do I do? Well, so far in Brianna's case, the officers that killed her have been reassigned, not fired, not charged with murder, reassigned. There are investigations happening and Brianna's family hired Benjamin Crump, the same civil rights attorney that was able to get some progress in Ahmaud Arbery's case and get his murderers arrested. So hopefully something is able to happen here as well. Well, I'm, I'm, I was processing the Ahmaud Arbery death and then there's the Brianna Reed death. And then just today when I was thinking about maybe I'll make a video to talk about how I feel, I see that there was another death earlier this month of Sean Reed. Sean Reed was 21 when he was shot and murdered by uh, Indianapolis PD on May 6th. And I do think if you read about this one, there probably was warrant for him to get arrested. He was driving uh, recklessly and um, maybe had been a dangerment to the neighborhood he was in. I'm not really sure, but it does sound like probably should have been arrested. What should not have happened was him being killed in this altercation. That didn't need to happen. And what's extra disturbing about Sean's death, like uh, Ahmad's death, is that the whole thing is on tape. He live streamed his own death. And after Sean was dead, his live stream kept going and you can hear an officer remark that Sean is gonna need a closed casket because this is all just a game for these cops. No remorse, no horror that they just killed someone. The ability to make a snide comment like that after you have just taken a life is beyond my realm of comprehension. I just, I, these people are so heartless and so cruel. I just, I don't even, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. I, I, I don't know. I have all this anger and sadness and I, I don't really know what to do with it. I feel very helpless. None of these black people had to die. None of these people were even 30. They were young um, and just living their lives. They didn't deserve this. I can't even imagine the fear that Ahmad felt as he was running for his life from people driving up to him with a shotgun. I can't imagine. Sean Reed probably heard about Ahmad Arbery and probably heard about Breonna Taylor and didn't even know that he was going to be the next hashtag. It could be any of us for any reason at any time. I feel like we're all already in such a fragile state right now because of the pandemic. We're all already on edge and ready for something terrible to happen at any moment because of being kept inside and getting stir crazy with our own thoughts. At least that's me. Like bad things are happening. People are losing their jobs. It's a really hard time right now. But at the same time, some white people feel empowered to lead militarized protests because they're mad they can't go to the bar or get a haircut, where at the same time, at the exact same parallel moment, black people are still being killed for no reason, even during a pandemic, still. Still, nothing nothing can stop it. Brianna was an EMT on the front lines of the coronavirus, and her hard work was rewarded with violence in her own death. Not that those two things are related, but my point is that Brianna was a hero. She was. Working as an EMT in this time, I can't imagine how hard that is. She is a hero, but that shouldn't matter. It doesn't mean that she deserved to die any more or less. Like, no matter what, regardless of the amazing work she was doing, if she was just not doing that, she still didn't deserve to die for any reason under those circumstances at all. I don't really have a whole lot to offer with this video, honestly. I'm just, I'm just depressed and like I said, sad. But what can I do? Well, okay, so when I feel like this, which is, you know, pretty constantly and spikes every few months when we hear about a new one of these deaths, but I look to Color of Change. Color of Change is an organization that fights injustice against Black people and also does great work when it comes to voter suppression and stopping it. I've had the privilege of writing about Color of Change in the past and interviewing some of their members and they really are doing amazing work, truly. Text them at 55156 and sign the petition to get the officers who murdered Brianna fired. Getting them fired would just be the beginning, but it is a start. Get them off the street, get them away Away from being able to carry weapons and be on the police force. I feel like it doesn't matter where you live or if you're jogging or if you're home or if you actually are committing a crime. Any scenario, if you're black, can get you killed. Being in the wrong, wrong place at the wrong time, as in your own house, can get you killed. 
trying to be healthy can get you killed. It's not anything new. We all know about this. I just feel really bad. So I would like to know how you feel about this. When a black life is unjustly snuffed out, how do you cope? How do you grieve? I call my mom and I'm like, mom, this happened and I feel really bad and I'm glad that you are still alive. I remind my little brother who even though he's younger than me is a large person, he's like 6'6", six, six, I remind him to be careful and to be as far away from cops at all times as possible because you don't know what's gonna happen. I would really like to get some kind of conversation going in the comments about how you process this unnecessary loss of black life because I am I'm looking for some help. Thank you for watching this and stay safe. And I know people are throwing around the phrase stay safe right now because of the pandemic, but from one black person to other black people who might be watching this, when I say stay safe, I mean I hope that you get to live your full lifespan. I mean, I feel like maybe we would protest right now, but it feels like you shouldn't even protest because we're not supposed to because of the pandemic. And I don't want to be responsible for spreading more of the coronavirus. I want, to do my, I want to do my part to stop that from spreading, but I feel like something has to be done because people are dying. It had nothing to do with coronavirus. And I just feel like I'm in this weird spiral of like, I want to do something, but I'm supposed to stay home. I want to go do something, but I'm supposed to stay home. I, mean, I can call my representatives. I've been doing that. I'm making some phone calls, leaving messages because no one ever answers. I'm just spiraling.